Can you tell us about Joe's accident? Well, we ra- we lived in Ohio and we raced from Ohio back to Jackson, New Jersey. In one afternoon. In one afternoon, and found out that he had been in a very serious accident. There were stories all over the place that we got bits and pieces. We never right. really got somebody died. And yeah, that he there killed was somebody. A total wreck. And, uh, they couldn't find his car. It was in the woods, and, and he we was, had no idea. We were just we were driving like with crazy thoughts. And uh, we were. I traced the route where he went, and uh, there were all things thrown out of his car that were. You know, the mats, the everything, everything that was in the car was thrown out the window. And then I looked at the, uh, the, the area where he actually drove before he became airborne. And uh, I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't even look at the tire marks. Uh, when we went down to see where the accident was and look at his car and it was evident that his uh, sorry it was evident that his head went to the back window and uh, 20 years do you believe this and he he landed um 18 inches from a huge pine had he been 18 inches over we wouldn't be having this conversation he would have been killed it was very tough If you feel comfortable about sharing, are you willing to tell me what it was like when Joe was committed? Oh gosh, that was devastating, devastatingly awful. It was the most traumatic thing in my life. Um, I had I had lost my dad as a teenager, and I came 18 inches away from losing my son. And it was we didn't know where to go or what to do. It was very traumatic. He could barely form sentences, you know. Uh, Following the ambulance to the hospital, I told them to just go ahead, be respectful, and do whatever it is that they're telling you to do. Well, before that, we were all, we were at the hospital. We had to kind of trick him into the car, and me, my husband, and my daughter um, drove him to the hospital. He was restraining him in the back of the car, and me and my daughter were, you know, doing the driving and we pulled up to the emergency, we brought him in and he went wild. He just went wild. Said things I never thought he'd say, just just like a wild man. And they shot him with some they had to tranquilizer. Drug him. Yeah. And they said, well, we have to bring him down to the, uh, the psych ward, whatever it is, and we're gonna have to put him in a straitjacket should I, do you want to talk to him? And I was like, oh God, Joe, don't. And he says, no, he says, I'm going to tell him what's going to happen because he's going to be scared out of his mind. And I thought, oh, is that the right thing? And he says, yes, I'm going to go tell him what they're going to do and that we will be following the ambulance right behind so he, you know, doesn't feel like he's being abandoned. So um, in retrospect, that was the right thing to do because then when we got there, we were able to see him and go in there with him, so he knew we were there. I mean, we couldn't be act, you know, physically with him, but at least he knew we were there, so. Up until five years ago, uh, I couldn't, couldn't even talk about this. That's true. I, when people would talk about it, I would actually leave the room and cry. And if we continue on the subject, I'll probably need a box of tissues or something. But, you know, it was very, very difficult to come to terms with. I kept reliving that moment in our lives saying, gee, why didn't we see this? What, what, what did we do wrong? You know, why didn't we notice something was dreadfully wrong? We couldn't even think of the accident with the car. And then I would say, well, just look at him now. He's alive, he's not, you know, just, I just can't get it out of my mind. I said, well, I just think of him how he is now and you know, everything is well. And that's how I cope with it, you know. What amazes you about Joe and what do you admire about him? He has passed every expectation I ever thought that, yeah. that he would yeah. achieve. I mean, I, we thought that we, he would live with us for the rest of our lives yeah. because yeah. he would be, like, you know, kind of mentally um, insufficient. Right. But he just 
It was so independent, so confident now. He met the most marvelous, wonderful girl that I think God sent her from heaven. <laughs> yeah. Because we love she the deal. just, they're just freaking frack, you know, arm and hammer, pork and beans. I mean, the two of them together. And he just passed all of my expectations. Me too. I thought. Me too.